You spot, you there? No. Uh, must be in the bathroom. Hello, folks, welcome again. I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here to provide some entertainment. Because. Yeah. Major announcement! WWE has now officially stopped all live events until April 30th. That's not good. I know here in the state of Florida, the governor issued a stay-at-home order also until April 30th, which is going to suck. And, well, as of Thursday... April 2nd, starting at 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., there's going to be a curfew in Daytona Beach. I can't hobo anymore. Oh, shoot. How am I going to make money? Man, this sucks. I hope this is over. I'm honestly hoping, like, after April. Because next week, at least I have yard work to do. And videos to make for you, my loyal YouTube audience. But jeez, after Easter, that's going to get long. And again, talking about my loyal listeners. Tim, thank you very much. You just told Nikki Cross to take it all off. And Nick Notch, you, sir, have earned that six count.
And with all that being said, all the paperwork being taken care of, let's talk about some AEW. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, this looked like it took place, I think, in like some like training facility. I don't think it was Daily Center. I'm not too sure if it was either in Jacksonville or Georgia. Because on the outside, there was some Astro turf. But that doesn't really mean anything. Because, again, you could have it outside of Atlanta. And there would still be AstroTurf because of the Falcons practice area. Jacksonville probably has it. Or I've even heard rumors it's Texas. I think the rumors going around is that it was at, held at DDP's private DDP yoga facility. It makes sense. It seems small, but it's hard to tell when it's blacked out with kind of banners hanging down. It makes it feel small, but it's hard to tell, though. Um, so that was this, and then Cody comes out. So we really like to thank our viewing audience. He brings Pharaoh out. Puppy Dog comes out. Woof, woof. Oh, Puppy Dogs will be put into play later, too. <laughs> we'll see. But opening match starts off. Uh, Trent Beretta taking on Kenny Omega. There's a hand shack and a little tap on the chest. We got Trent backs Kenny up into the ropes. A little, oh, yeah. See it as a clean break. Then Kenny does a float over headlock. It's pretty fun. Very aggressive. Very hard striking match. Um, a very much a Kenny Omega slow burn match. And the opening match is not really what you want to see. It was good to see people ringside, though. And it was very traditional. Faces on one side, heels on the other side. I know with the faces, there only seen there was uh, Brandy when she wasn't managing. Uh, Austin Gunn and Billy Gunn. I think that was it. The heels seemed to have a lot more for some reason. Because it was um, Jimmy Havoc, Kip Sabian, Penelope Ford, and that Pitch Baker. Oh, I mean Britt Baker. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. But, um, so again, that was good to see. And then, of course, action continuing in the ring. There's a spring bow and moonsault. And then they, and then, uh, so Trent Breda went for a spring bow and moonsault. Gets, goes to the outside. Then Kenny does a dive. Kenny goes out. And he wants to, oh, that's right. It was uh, Chuck Taylor. He wanted a hug from Chuck Taylor. But no, Kenny Omega, you too have to learn social distancing. You should have learned that like in Japan and stuff. Because I think they were the first people. I think Chinese people actually were the first really to wear like surgical masks. Japanese people I think were a pretty close second. With the Koreans for some reason. I've heard terrible things about Chinese air quality though. Because I know my one boss when he went to China, he was so happy to come back to New York. I'm like... I mean, you're happy to come back to New York City. Oh, they're so much cleaner here. I'm like, no. Okay. In Hastings, Michigan, in Hastings, Michigan, I think it was one day, I think it was actually north of Hastings, Michigan, towards the upper part, I think it was one early summer night in June, we could actually see the Aurora Borealis. And that happens weird. It happens with the sun, um, solar storms and stuff. Every so often, northern Michigan will get the Aurora Borealis. That was pretty cool to see, though. But what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, air quality. Like, north of Hastings, Michigan, I mean, the air quality is pristine. I've, I've, and I'll say this. I've never seen a bluer sky than when I first went out to Michigan. The first thing you see, you see this like pristine blue sky. You're like, whoa. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so, so Kerry wants a hug. Actually, Orange Cassidy was about ready to give him a hug. And they were the faces I made up ringside. Then there were three backbreakers by Kenny Omega. That was pretty cool. Uh, Cody's actually pretty good in commentary. I actually like Cody more so than JR because Cody's at least trying to sell the match. JR tends to poo-poo the match a lot. 
So that was good to see. And then Jimmy Havoc, they were on the outside. Jimmy Havoc just carries around a freaking crescent wrench. Or not a crescent wrench, but it was, it's, it's not a socket set, but it's, yeah, it's like a regular, it's a regular wrench. Carries around this wrench in his back pocket. He's like, here, you want to use a wrench? And, 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 what the hell are you doing with that? How, how'd you get, how'd that, the, I want to know how that wrench got through the metal detectors. That's terrible. And, and, and we'll get to some terrible stuff later from, from Bitch Baker. Britt Baker, I'm sorry. DDS. Yeah, they offered him like a wrench. Uh, then there was a half and half suplex by Trent. And the pile driver. This upset me. Because Trent hit the pile driver in Kenny Omega. I don't care what your name is. You do not kick out of a pile driver. The pile driver is the ultimate finishing move. Boo! Boo, AEW. Boo. In fact, that lowered my opinion of this match. Who kicks out of a pile driver? Pile driver kills people. Shame on you, AEW. You get the finger wag of shame. Who kicks out of the pile driver? And then eventually, of course, Kenny Omega has a V trigger, and then a one wing angel out of nowhere with like one minute left. Kenny Omega wins. Yeah. Oh, this is still a good match. It's a cheeseburger match. And a little fist bump because you're supposed to maintain social distancing, and then they blew it up. That was good to see. I do like the sportsmanship, though. Then we have a Matt Hardy recap. And then our next match was Hikaru Shida taking on Anna Jay. Uh, all I can say about Hikaru Shida, she likes to grab women by the crotch. She did it in her last match. It was Shana. I forget if it was Shana or Chris Detlander. She just grabbed a handful of cooch. And then later on this match, she grabbed a handful of Miss Anna J. Down there, too. Because you could tell, like, it was like, she was, like, grabbing for something. Because her hand, hand kind of, like, went into her trunk bottoms. But not from, like, this angle. Like, from the side angle. Yeah, she rubbed against something down there. Oh. Um, this is, I don't know. Anna, Anna J, she started, like, flinging her hair all over the place. You're, you're not Bianca Belair. You have, like, soft, fluffy, curly hair, Anna J. Doesn't work like that. And then she did the knee lift on the apron. That was pretty good. And then Britt. Like, like Hikaru Shida's outside and Rip Baker's like, no, social distance. Stupid bitch Baker. Then there was a Clemson roll in the backslide by a Anna J. And I want to know what this jobber is doing getting all these moves in on Hikaru Shida. Hikaru Shida should have squashed her. It should have been a five minute match. Hikaru Shida should have kneed Anna J's head off. Instead, Anna Jay's like flinging her hair, doing a Clemson roll, a back, a back roll, a schoolgirl, school which thankfully Hikaru Shida turned into a triangle choke. And then there was a, a great suplex by Shida, though. She actually held her up there. It wasn't the delayed vertical suplex, but it was just long enough. It's like, yeah, I guess where you're going. I have a feeling Hikaru Shida didn't like Anna Jay too much. I have a feeling Hikaru Shida doesn't like most women wrestler, even though she just feels them up all the time. So then she actually won by the Falcon Arrow. And then, of course, when she went for the pin, yeah, she got a handful of Anna J. Um, I'm, like, I'm surprised. The Falcon Arrow actually won. Man, she just likes to grab women, though. She's grabbed more women in two weeks on there than, than I have in... Wow, two years. That's not good for me. This match overall, eh, the can of soup.
Then we have John Moxley and Jake Hagar promo. They're going to fight in an empty arena. This makes sense because it's going to be kind of an unsanctioned match. It's going to be a John Moxley. There's probably going to be some blood. But this will be good. Then Colt Cabana comes on com commentary. This we're a Colt. Colt, Colt Cabana. He's, he's good on commentary, too. Our next match was Marco Stunt <laughs> versus Lance Archer. Uh, this also should have been a squash match. This was fun, though. Mar uh, Lawrence Archer just comes out and starts ragdolling. Marco Stunt all over. Marco tries. Uh, Marco did get pounced out of the ring. That was really good. It's a one-hand choke slam. Ah, the, uh, I'm not winning yet. Picks him up. Uh, does the blackout, which is like a reverse version of the razor's edge where instead of being the back and then falling you're like in the front and falling so you, you actually see the mat coming to you uh marco's done trying to get getting some kicks yeah not much happened the blackout and then eventually lance archer is upset enough he after he gets the one two three lance archer throws oh marco stun to the crowd marco stun is a dead body and dead weight that was entertaining it was a ham sandwich of a match. This is what a squash match really should be. And then there was Mr. Brody Lee. Came out. Tiredness. You can't be tired. Being tired shows weakness. Because I'm Mr. Brody Lee. Oh, wait a second. I know someone else called Mr. Vince McMahon. Who also doesn't like people being tired. Oh my my. Then we have the Dark Order number 8 and 9 come out versus QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes. Uh, QT Marshall to um, tosses the one guy out. Uh, it was a. He, well, he, he actually tossed the Dark Order mast. The mat stomped it, went right after the Dark Order. Uh, Dustin gets back in the ring, and very classic work by Dustin Rhodes. Again, everything you expect, the kneel down. Uppercut, uh, the running off the ropes power slam, which is really good. You also do the classic double team moves. Uh, when Dustin Rhodes tagged in QT Marshall, QT Marshall won the top rope. Oh, with a double axe handle blow. It's always good to see old school moves like that. Uh, again, QT, he did the body slam to a suplex. That looked amazing. And then their double team was like a flapjack cutter. That was fun to see. QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes win and then a ham sandwich match. And with this, Brody Lee shows up, stares down Dustin Rhodes, and he destroys Dark Order number eight. As a warning, Dark Order number nine. Don't lose next time, or this will happen to you. Then we have Chris Jericho in his backyard drinking the bubbly. I love the way Chris Jericho did it. He had his bottle of the bubbly, and he had a glass. He poured the champagne into the champagne glass first, put the glass down. He forgot, he forgot what he was supposed to do and just drank the, the bubbly out of the bottle. That was great. Cut a promo, and then Vanguard 1 shows up. <laughs> He offers Vanguard one this like kid size, <laughs> this kid size inner circle shirt. <laughs> and you can tell, like those little circles, they just kind of hung it up, and then Vanguard flew away. Vanguard one flew away. <laughs> and Chris Jericho, release the hands! And I'll tell you what, the, the three cutest little puppy dogs. <laughs> oh, you would have went pretty sore. <laughs> He's like, release the hounds! <laughs> and these three cute puppy dogs come like running out of the pool area. And it's just like, they're like, yep, 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 yep. Like, they're just happy to be out and running. Like, they're not the hounds. It's like, release the puppy dogs. And there was a Matt and Nick Jackson promo. Dude, I like where they live. They have like a tennis court in their, their backyard. And they built a wrestling ring there. That's the community I want to live in. 
I have to move out to Rancho Cucamondo. I have a very sneaking suspicion. I couldn't afford Rancho Cucamondo. I think that's how they call it. I have to pay attention better one day. Then this led to the main event of the evening. So we had Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears taking on Cody Rhodes and Darby Allen. I matched myself with a pump kick from Cody Rhodes. That's pretty good. This is actually a pretty long match. This was the main event. It really took like half an hour because it is for TV time. Uh, Sammy Guevara. Again, it was funny. He lost his cell phone. He was vlogging while trying to get in the ring. Lost his cell phone. Uh, that got tossed into the crowd. Everyone was using his cell phone to pray to call dirty people or look up dirty pictures on using his data. Who knows? Uh, then they did the double dive because Darby died. Because Darby Helen dives through Sammy Guevara, takes out the barricade. The barricade got beat up this time. The barricade did not help anyone. The barricade almost took out Chuck Taylor. Act. Then, of course, they, Cody and Darby Allen do their double dives on both of them. Uh, Cody is such a classic wrestling technician, very classic wrist lock by Cody. The delayed vertical suplex. Um, by Cody Rhodes. Then they did the Make-A-Wish split, which if you ever see it, the one guy's laying down, both legs are in the air. Each wrestler gets on one side, they each pull. Oh, yeah, it looks like this. And then he goes, oh, yeah, painful. It's like what we used to call in amateur wrestling, the old banana split. Painful. Then they, then they started to make bets because uh, Darby was trying to fight out the heel corner. And they were making bets, $50 a pop, as to who could hold the longer delayed suplex. Uh, first of all, Sammy Guevara made a bet. He threw, he threw 50 bucks in the ring. said, you can't hold them for 10 seconds. So he held them up there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Dropped them. Tagged in. Sent... Uh, Sammy Guevara, then he makes a bet. But here's 50 more bucks. You can't hold them for 15 seconds. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Boom. Tags in. And then he says, You know what? Double or nothing. You can't do it for 20 seconds. Oh, I love the fact that they're gambling on the ring and the heels are going. They're cheering it in the faces. They're booing. They're like, boo, we don't want this. The feels like, yeah. Yeah, Britt Baker, I think she was going to take her top off and show us what's not there because Britt Baker is skinny. Skinny, skinny, skinny. Way too skinny. Again, if you've ever known me, my the one thing, the one thing I actually find, well, I find only a few things unattractive in women. The one thing I find really unattractive in women is if, if I can see your rib cage, I mean, if I can see each individual bone, if I can see your clavicle, if I can see the out, outline of your hip bone, and if I can see your individual vertebrae, no, no, no. I, I, I don't want to hug a skeleton because one, I'll feel, I'm a big guy lady. Look at all this beef. But, I mean, that's just not attractive, though. I just want something to, like, hold, and I, I don't want to feel bone. I think I told the story a long time ago when I was in high school. There was a girl sitting in front of me, Julia Alex. Wow, I remember her name. That's how ingrained this is in my head. It was um, Julia Alexander and Diana Ziegler. Something like that. I don't think it was Ziggler, but it started like that. Between the two of them, dude, she wore a white, a white uniform that you could see through. And I took my pencil in history class. I went ding 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 ding
Ugh. Again, number one thing that turns me off about certain women. And again, like every guy, again, I have my own personal preferences. I'm sure people out there have their own. Hey, if you like skinny chicks, power to you guys. I don't dig skinny. I think I don't, as long as, I think my three rules, and I think there's four. You have to have completed at least a two-year program in college. Because that means you can talk, you can hold conversations, you can discuss things intelligibly, you, you, you know stuff. You can't be super, you can't be super skeletal. That's like, no. Like, I, I will try to feed you and put fat on your bone. But then if I can't do that, that's nah, not happening. I can't fit in your shadow. If I fit in your shadow, I'm a fairly, again, I'm a pretty big, beefy guy. But if I fit in your shadow, though, no, nah, that means you're too big. And, oh, yeah, you just have to be born a woman. Makes sense, I guess. You never know, though. Um, so with all that being said, uh, same as he wind up, uh, of course, didn't happen for the 22nd. Uh, Darby Allen rolled up Sean Spears. He couldn't go for the 20. And then Sean and then Sammy's, Sammy, Sammy Guevara was just picking up all, all the money. Then there's some weird botch, but they fixed it pretty good. I don't even know what they were doing. Cody hit, uh, might as well be a, the lethal injection. Uh, he tosses his belt to the crowd. Brandy catches his belt. At least there's Brandy there to catch his belt. He puts the figure four on Sean Spears. The top rock, top top rope crossroads. But then they get to the outside. So there's again heel interference. Britt Baker beats Cody with a shoe. Brandy, go do something. Go 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 beat up bitch Baker for hitting your husband. And then Cody Rhodes, I think, actually did back Sammy Guevara when he tried to hit on <laughs> he tried to hit on Brandy Rhodes. Good for you, Cody Rhodes. Although he, he went to go kiss Brandy, and Chuck Taylor kind of leaned in. Whoa. That's what I have to say. Whoa, Chuck Taylor. You need to practice some social distancing, distancing there, buddy. You know, it's kind of weird. It's like, whoa, social distancing. I have to learn that. Although Asuka. Asuka and Nikki Cross should have absolutely no concept of what social distance is. Those two are better the closer they get. Again, it's Asuka and Nikki Cross, though. Uh, and then, of course, you have the heel miscue. Sean Spears takes out Sammy Guevara. Uh, Darby Allen fought. Again, by Spears and just toss into the barricades. Cody does his dive. It was a Death Valley driver onto Cody Darby. Climbs up. He climbs up like the supporting pole. Those are major support structures of a building. They're not supposed to give. They do not give. If they give, something's really wrong. So he was climbing up that pole and then fell for a coffin drop. Um, Darby then eats the barricade. Eats up the barricade. Poor barricades. Man, they have to have a budget for like new, new bicycle rack every couple of shows. Uh, Cody does a reverse superplex that was pretty fun. And then the heels, then they just got distracted. Uh, Darby Allen got nailed somehow. Cody was still stuck on the outside. The heels rolled up Darby Allen and got the win. So Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears actually won. Darby Allen was like upset about this and just like act Cody and it's like whoa that ain't cool dude I want to see Cody like just break Darby Allen like a freaking twig at least Cody has muscle on him Darby Allen's a, a skinny guy he's too skinny to be a pro wrestler he has to have some girth on him and his forehead's too smooth baby because Cody Rose he has a nah. Lumpy looking for you now with some scars on it. He's manly. He is hot wife. But ugly tattoo though. Uh, 
And then uh, Sammy Guevara started holding up signs. They didn't focus on that. That was the end of AEW because it went right to the 10 o'clock hour. I'll tell you what, for the most part, this was actually a surf and turf match. And a little bit of what's going to happen for the rest of the week. Tomorrow, make my predictions. I'm going to invite Dr. Tom over. He's going to make predictions for WrestleMania. Uh, I like to use the Roman numeral system because I am somewhat educated. 36. And also tomorrow, it's going to be part one in a video collection of what I did during the coronavirus. So look for that Tuesday. That's going to be kind of funny. There's, I mean, a list of 10 things that you can do during the coronavirus. And then probably next week on Thursday, well, I'm going to make a list of 10 things that you can do while out of stay, stay at home order. So that's a lot of the things will be repeating, but still, it should be an interesting thing to watch. I might narrow down to. Yeah, I can do 10 things. Some things might be repeated. We'll see. So again, um, rest of this week, tomorrow we have two shows. My predi uh, Dr. Tom's going to be here for his predictions. I'm going to put up a show. <laughs> My list of 10 things I did during the coronavirus. Friday is going to be SmackDown. Saturday's WrestleMania Day 1. I've already made my graphic for it. I think I'll be doing that live stream. If not, it's going to be a review. For sure then, unless I really screwed something up. On Sunday will be Day 2 of WrestleMania. And we'll get into the next week. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hope everyone is staying well. Bye.